All right, good morning, folks. What's cracking? Today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023. We got a banger of a show today. Welcome to episode number 324 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. I'm your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier, and over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Marcus Seiler, Carrie Cheeson, Chuck Sapp, Jeff Witala, Chad Green, Kay Senophilis, and so many more of the Simply Cyber community, the UK representing are going to be bringing the hottest, most spicy, (laughs) top cybersecurity news stories of the day. And I'll be providing my expert analysis and opinion on each of those stories, as well as many of you will be in chat. So stay tuned. It's going to be good. If you're new to the industry, um, you know, there's going to be value here on understanding concepts and terminology. If you're looking to break into the industry, this is how you stay current, which you will absolutely be asked in any interview. And if you're a longtime practitioner, uh, it's good to stay uh, stay frosty and keep you know keep up on current events. Because, dude, you know as well as I do, this thing moves wicked fast. Now, before we move into the stream and do all these hot takes on all these great stories, I do want to take a moment and say shout out and thanks to the stream sponsors, starting with Pan- uh, Barricade Cyber Solutions, my man Eric Taylor, dropping the uh, innovative Simply Cyber Community Challenge video on LinkedIn the other day. Great, great um, Simply Cyber Community Channel challenge uh, entry. So listen, Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Thanks for the sub, Cody. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. Just not sleeping, wondering what what is going to happen next. Trust me, you don't want that for you or for your business or for your business owner or for anyone in the business. But listen, Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. They work. They interact with threat actors on the regular so you don't have to. They know the behaviors. They know the workflows. They know negotiation. They know how to get you back up and running, most importantly. So check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. This is the website. Bookmark it. Because most people... Right now, anyone, Nightshade, I heart this too. Nightshade could easily get on Eric's calendar right now and talk to Eric about uh, Nightshade's business and what would happen if Nightshade's business got popped. And not, no disrespect to Nightshade, but a lot of businesses were like, ah, no problem. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. And then they get hit. And then they're like, what was that guy's name? What was that website's name? Ah, Barricade Cyber something. So just bookmark it so you got it. I'm telling you, when the crap hits the fan, you're going to want a plan uh, uh, to to execute on. Also want to say shout out to the newest sponsor, XM Cyber. Holla, holla, holla. You have misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, mismanaged creds, other exposures on-prem, in the cloud. Your network, like whatever you're responsible for, is likely got uh, a bit of a mess going on, all right? I know we all love cable management and the slick looking pictures on Twitter. Uh, people like braiding their network cables, but let's be real. Most of our server racks, most of our desks look like <laughs> messes, and that's that corresponds to the way that the uh, infrastructure is built sometimes too. So XM Cyber they introduce a new way to address this on-prem and cloud hybrid exposures. Instead of looking at the volume of issues in silos, right? Like, okay, show me all the misconfigurations, show me my external interface, show me the cloud. XM Cyber can combine all of them into an attack graph, so it's a nice visual representation of what your situation looks like. And it can proactively uncover hidden attack paths and security control gaps across your cloud and on-prem and the hybrid and all the interfacing in between. So you can actually pinpoint, identify, prioritize the actual issues that are going to actually reduce risk for your organization. Guys, a metric in our industry isn't how many things you patched, okay? It's not how many fishes did you stop. A metric is... Like, how, like, what is our risk exposure? What, how, like, how, how, like, percentage wise, how much risk exposure did you reduce using a tool like this? Okay. So, just, it's, it's a more complicated issue than a 30 second ad read, but trust me. Uh, visit xmcyber.com, click the link in the description below. You can see it. It's like a bit.ly link because they have some tracking information to show you that it came from Simply Cyber. Do me a favor, click on the link if any of this is interesting to you and check out their enterprise. Uh, exposure management platform. Also, much love to Panopsi, but we'll talk about more 
uh, of them in the mid-roll. I've been pushing one of uh, the sponsors to the mid-roll just to kind of give you guys a little break in the action, not just be uh, soliciting you. Okay, thank you to the stream sponsors, though, for real, for keeping the stream going, allowing me to upgrade quality of life improvements, pay for editors to make those sick uh, produced videos look super cool. So thanks so much to the stream sponsors. Remember, each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPE, so be sure to say what's up in chat. Thanks for being here so much. Hashtag Team Live for my Team Live people. We're at 96. Let's break through to triple digits if you don't mind. Also want to say hello in the future to Team Replay. This is Jerry from the past. Hashtag Team Replay in the comments. You guys all know that I love the Team Replay uh, equally as Team Live. Uh, they, they are people too. Um, also, you know, to the uh, marginalized groups, hashtag Team Hybrid. What's up, Team Hybrid? If you started in the past and you did double speed to catch up to us in real time, want to say holla, holla, holla. And then last but not least, my absolute favorite, the initiative we've been pushing with Simply Cyber Community Challenge. What's up, hashtag Passive Observer? If you are lurking in the background, if you haven't said what's up, if you're not sure, feel imposter syndrome, feel awkward, not sure how to... Get engaged. No networking is wicked important because I say it all the time, but you don't know how to do it. Just say hashtag passive observer in chat. Step out into the light. Let the Simply Cyber community say, hey, what's going on, you? All right. This is the best way to do it. Chuck Sapp, passive observer. Good to see you, Chuck. All right, guys. That's the intro. I'll see you at the mid-roll. Again, we're going to make our own mid-roll this week. I guess uh, CISO series. It's just gapping on sponsors right now. But sit back, relax. Emilio Garcia, get your favorite slippers on. Kick your feet up. Siphodius, do the same. I got my coffee, fresh cup of joe, French roast in my branded Simply Cyber mug. Sit back, relax, and let the awesomeness of the CISO Series podcast wash over you in an awesome wave. I'll see you guys at the mid-roll. From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, March 16th, 2023. Two charged in DEA portal hack. Prosecutors charged two men with illegally accessing an online portal for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency. This portal connected into over a dozen other federal law enforcement databases. Prosecutors allege the men operated as part of the larger vile criminal organization that uses faked emergency data requests to dox victims. Once vile operators receive information from these requests, they post it on illicit forums and extort victims to have it removed. Sometimes this entails giving the attackers access to social network accounts. Amer All right, so this is a pretty uh, straightforward. You know, it's interesting. This is a pre pretty straightforward crime. And the only thing that's really interesting to me is that these two enterprising criminals decided to go after a federal uh, um, agency's, well, a federal law enforcement agency. Database, essentially. I, I find it stunning. So basically the crime here is a 19-year-old and a 25-year-old, which, you know, I'd be curious to see what the punishment's going to be for this. But a 19-year-old and a 25-year-old you like um, abuse databases used by law enforcement. Again, you know, law enforcement has access to sensitive data in order to do investigations and find bad people in our society. Um, these two individuals weaponize that by finding out who someone's, uh, you know, personal information is. What street do they live on? What, you know, what, 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 um, uh, political party do they align with whatever right and then publish it online and then this is it this is what so funny it's like such a straightforward crime right so i take kimberly right i take kimberly can fix it and i i put her information online and then i contact her and i'm like kimberly for 50 bucks i'll take it off i'll take it off the internet i'll take it down right it's simple base it's simple basic petty extortion Okay, that's all it is. And again, these these guys, they decided to commit these extortion crimes, which are not sophisticated at all, by a, by a breaking into a federal law enforcement agency database, essentially. So, yikes. Yikes. Not how I would approach it, my friends. 
Uh, pretty powerful database hooking into 16 different federal law enforcement agencies. I will say, I'm kind of curious, how did they hack into it? Was it stolen creds or was it... Um, uh, let's see how they do it here. Search public and private online databases. So public databases, come on. Uh, they're just using OSINT, non-public website. Okay, so that's not good. Without authorization and official email accounts. So it sounds like they were basically just um, doing phishing, getting creds and then logging in as the individual. Yeah, they use stolen credentials to log into US federal government portal without authorization. Bro, how? Oh my God. Like the, uh, okay. I just, can we pause for a second? Like, can we just pause? Think about this. This web portal has access to 16 other different federal agencies' databases. It is designed for the drug enforcement agency to run investigations and do stuff. It is publicly, it's a public portal, right? It's a website or it's a, yeah, it's a website. You guys can't see it because I can't zoom in right now, but this is a .gov website. And it's basically a, you know, uh, it's not Google, but it's like a search engine, right? It's like an employee record database, except it's for law enforcement inquiries. Dude, look at this. Biden um, cybersecurity memo. Uh, MFA, ZTA. Let, Mar May 12th. Let, I'm so mad about this. May 12th, 2021. Follow me? May 12th, 2021. And this is, this is why, like, federal government, it, bureaucracy moves slow. Big splash back in May. If you remember, I did a live stream with Jack Scott. Big splash, right? I'm just going to search for the word multi-factor. Within 180 days of this order, agencies shall adopt multi-factor authentication and data encryption for data and rest in transit to the maximum extent consistent with federal laws. 180 days. Let me just do some quick math here. 180 plus May 12, 2021. Is that before or after March 16th, 2023. I'm just back of the napkin math here. I think it's before that. So how is this, this incredibly sensitive data set with a public portal not having multi-factor authentication in front of it? This is what I'm talking about, dude. Like you can make all these memos and it's awesome. Like White House cybersecurity strategy that just dropped with the five pillars. Heck yeah. Like I'm on board. Get the train rolling. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But dude, something as simple as multi-factor authentication on a portal that's publicly accessible and so sensitive, how was that not done on May 13th, 2021? Why was it even, why did you need an executive memo to tell you to do it in the first place? It's obvious it should be done. It's so infuriating, dude. It's 2023, get your multi-factor on and get to work. Ugh, it's disgusting, man. Mercy. It's so stupid. Ugh. Americans lose billions in scams. According to figures released by the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, American citizens lost over $10 billion to online scammers in 2022. This increased 49% on the year to the highest level on record. Overall, the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center recorded over 800,000 scam complaints in the year, a slight decrease on the year. Phishing activity received the most complaints, about 37.5%. Crypto investment fraud saw a massive increase in volume, up 185% on the year to $2.57 billion. 30% of all fraud losses came from Americans age 60 and older. Yep. Ransomware complaints received by IC3 actually fell in the year to 2385 accounting for $34.3 million in losses. Right. So, <clears throat> so if you don't know the FBI IC3, uh, they're like the Internet Crime Center whatever, like I forget what the C stands for, but it's like I and then CCC. Um, and they report annually on online fraud, crypto fraud. It's it's like a really great resource and <clears throat> it's US government. So it's not like, um, it's not a vendor sponsored research where the findings somehow miraculously correspond to like 900% increase in whatever this attack is that our product also helps defend against. This is like, this is a good, viable object as objective as can be 
um, st resource, okay, the IC3.gov or the FBI's IC3. Uh, one other thing to note is that this, this value right here, $10.3 billion, yes, this is good, but you need to remember, people, that this is just what was reported to the FBI, right? So Jess Bishop's company gets nailed. Thank you, BSEC, Internet Crime Complaint Center. Jess Bishop's, um, you know, has a, um, I don't know, Jess, what do you want? Je Jess has a, um, uh, let, let's do a, um, like one of those like 45-minute uh, fitness centers that are in the strip malls where like people compete against each other. Okay, that's what, we'll call it Jess Bishop Fitness, okay? Jess Bishop Fitness, and she's a small business, and Jess, you're crushing it. I love it. Uh, $400,000 in revenue year over year. You got 20% growth. Boom, you get hit with a business email compromise for $60,000. You're pissed. You lose the money. Guess what you don't have time for? Contacting the FBI because you're just irritable and you want to get back to people's uh, health goals, okay? That doesn't get reported. So this number right here is... Like, it's not less than $10.3 billion, but it is less than what is actually happening. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And I can't give you a, a statistical amount like, oh, 40% of all crimes aren't reported because we don't have visibility into what is not reported. We have some ideas, but it's subjective at best. Okay, so a couple key things to find out here. One, um, fraud is rampant. Two, ransomware has gone down. Uh, this should not be a surprise. Uh, we have slowly been saying, if you've been a regular of Simply Cyber um, Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, you know that we've been making some incremental wins. We, like I'm doing anything here. The, our industry has been making some incremental wins on battling ransomware. We've won a couple battles. We haven't won the war yet, but um, the tide is shifting. It's very good. It's like we're entering the third act of a movie, right? The second act is like Empire Strikes Back and we're we're hanging from the bottom of the um the Bespin uh Cloud City antenna thing after we just found out Vader's our dad. We got like one arm or one hand or whatever and then the Millennium Falcon pulls up and whisks us away from certain death, okay? Like that's where we are right now. We're entering act 3 of the war on ransomware and things are looking pretty good for us. We're probably going to do Jabba's lair um uh, next, which you know, which would be like whatever the ransomware threat actors layer is. Uh, crypto investment fraud is nearly tripled. Uh, crypto winner is happening, but you know, crypto is still easy to transfer and commit fraud. Be mindful, business email compromise is still quite a thing. Uh, be mindful um, that romance scams are out there. They said that most people, and this is probably the key takeaway. I know I'm like the coffee is like flowing. I've got like a direct hard line into my arm with this coffee right now. Woo! The key takeaway here, even though there's a lot to take away, is that a majority of victims on scams are 60 and over, which totally makes sense. Think about think about the perfect storm of this victim pool. One, they're not really tech savvy. All due respect, I'm not an ageist. It's just a fact, okay? So they're not wicked tech savvy. Second, they have money, most of them, right? Like a lot of people, they've worked their entire lives. They've built retirement. They have savings, right? A 12-year-old less likely to have a lot of money. A 70-year-old, likely to have money, right? Not guaranteed, but more likely, okay? So now you've got a population that's vulnerable and has something that the threat actors want. And it's very easy to trick them. Romance scams, you get widowers. Uh, hey, like, you know, you're gonna get arrested for not going to jury duty unless you buy gift cards, boom, bang, whatever, okay? These people, the, the scammers, they suck. If you want more information, uh, there's an excellent, in mods, if you could do this, is a little bit of an Easter egg hunt for you, but there was an ABC News uh, YouTube video. ABC News, I think if you Google uh, ABC News Ghana, G-H-A-N-A, romance scams, there is a fascinating piece on how structured the Roma, romance scams are, are out of Ghana. I mean, it's almost like a village, um, like, trade. It's like, it's, it's like they teach... The people in the village how to do it and it's like it's very well organized um anyways just be mindful of this i'm giving a talk in um april 20th uh in san diego and i'm telling you i've been i've been i've been waiting to fill out my slides i've got you know a lot of my slides done but some of my key slides have just been waiting because i knew there was going to be just in time jit 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 just in time um news stories and, and statistics that i could pop into my slide deck and be like just yesterday this or just last month this 
TikTok considering divestment. Bloomberg sources say the social app discussed divesting itself from its parent company, ByteDance, but only as a last resort to address U.S. national security concerns. This could result in either a sale of TikTok's U.S. operations or an initial public offering. Bloomberg reports a spun-out TikTok could receive up to a $50 billion valuation. This would only occur if TikTok's existing proposals don't pass a national security review by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. Sources say any divestment would require approval by the Chinese government. Given current political tensions, that approval remains a very open question. All right. Humans beat... Two things here. One, TikTok is definitely the crown jewel of, you know, uh, again, tinfoil hat cherry. It's like the crown jewel of kind of like data gathering, uh, espionage, whatever you want to call, call it, right? So China's very interested in TikTok uh, and maintaining it in five eyes type countries, right? And we've already seen Canada ban it, at least in the government, US ban it in the government. The US is about to potentially ban it. I haven't been following that legislation, but potentially ban it in the United States. TikTok considering split. Guys, here's the deal. In tinfoil hat, Jerry, please. The only way TikTok's gonna split is if China agrees. Zatani, thanks for the sub. Now listen, if TikTok splits, I'm telling you right now, it's just window dressing. There's no way there's like China. They don't like, do you think China's really like, wow, this is a really, uh, you know, heavy revenue generating lucrative opportunity. We should definitely split out and lose all access. No, if this thing splits off, I, I would, I would imagine in some capacity, um, there will be no change in the way the data flows from TikTok users into you know, whatever people's Republic of China, right? Like it, like it'll just be going through like a middle middleman or middle woman, you know, like it, like there's no way that they walk away from this thing and be like, Oh no problem. You know what? Hey, you guys got it. We're cool. Like there's no way that's happening. Second of all, and someone sent me this news article and I thought it was really interesting. Like, even if you ban TikTok, I, my understanding is there's like 28, 28,000, um, apps that have like middleware integration and backend integration into um, into TikTok's kind of um, ecosystem. So data is being pulled from not just TikTok, but 28,000 other apps, okay? So like banning TikTok doesn't really stem the tide of data flowing in into there. Uh, but, you know, TikTok has like, I think it's like, um, like 60% or something like that. Like it's over 50 percent of all social media consumption in the United States is on TikTok, right? The the younger generation, they they can't eat enough TikTok. You know? I, I I wish Simply Cyber could figure out how to get on TikTok. I've tried a little bit, but guys, I'm just I just I'm tired. I don't I don't know how. Like I tried. Like my Instagram game's not even that good. I can't even whatever. I'll tell you about the jaw jack and remind me about Instagram during Jaw Jack and I've tried it. AI in fishing. A new research paper from Hoax Hunt looked at the phishing click rate of a professional red team compared to using messages generated with ChatGPT. It found that humans outperformed the AI with a 4.2% click rate versus 2.9% for the AI. Interestingly, the results showed significant regional variability. ChatGPT saw the most clicks from US respondents, while Sweden showed the biggest edge to humans. The win for humanity may be short-lived, however. The researchers cautioned it carried out the test before the release of OpenAI's GPT-4 model, yeah. which could offer substantial improvements in effectiveness. All right. You so <clears throat> that's a key uh, a key thing. Chat GPT-4 dropped uh, a few hours ago. I've already read <laughs> multiple stories of people who stayed up all night with Chat GPT-4, and it is... Um, I guess before I get taken off the airwaves by uh, my digital overlords, um, it's stunning how more powerful Chat, chat GPT four is. It, it's it's staggering. Um, so the fact that they caveated this research saying that it wasn't Chat GPT four is an important thing to note. Um, guys, here's the thing: whether it's a well written email um, or not. Whether it looks like whether it has the right graphics, guys. I've been getting pickleball emails and Dick Sporting Good emails for days now. You you'd think that I I could like run my own resale pickleball set business. The amount of 
Uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Shall we play a game? Thanks, chat, for reminding me about Joshua. Um, you gotta you gotta educate your end users, okay? Like chat GPT or a human writing the phishing email, they're gonna hit all those points. Sense of urgency, um, you know, sense of, of uh well, sense of urgency, frankly, and a, a bit of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Hey, you've got 10 minutes to respond to this email or we delete all of your family photos on Google Drive. Hey, we've we've discovered a threat actor is inside your bank account draining your money right now. Click here to stop them from stealing from you. Like whatever it is, sense of urgency and um, fear. All right, so just be careful with that. I'm not I'm not really too worried about this one. All right. One more for chat uh Joshua cuz I this is me paying uh like um penance or homage to ChatGPT and AI just so they don't come after me first. Shall we play? This Marshall service data for sale. Oh, hold on. Threat actor. Let's do one more story and then we'll do the mid-roll. Cuz it is um it is. What's your meme Thursday, guys? It was listed hundreds of gigabytes of data for sale on a Russian-speaking forum, allegedly stolen from the U.S. Marshal Service. The data set claims to hold documents from file servers and work computers from 2021 through February 2023. The poster claims it includes information on the Witness Protection Program, aerial footage of military bases, and details on wiretapping operations. The USMS confirmed last month it began investigating a data exfiltration event after a ransomware attack on February 17th. At that time, NBC News' sources say the attackers did not gain access to the service's witness security file information system. All right, all right. couple things here. We saw a couple days ago the U.S. Marshals got uh, hacked. Uh, classic double extortion technique where they ransomware the victim and exfil or exfiltrate all the data uh, to have a copy so the threat actors can sell it. So they'll get um, paid for ransom and paid for data. It looks like um, they're selling it for $150,000. So it's just a lump sum. You can't, you can't buy pieces of it. Um, now here's an interesting thing. Uh, they've got data of wiretapping surveillance of citizens, files on cartels. Uh, so, you know, there could be some interesting information about you if you're concerned. Now, the witness protection program, that, that's nauseating, right? Because those people are intentionally hidden because they turned evidence or they're an informant or whatever. So those people should really be crap in their pants, honestly. I wouldn't feel safe. I, I, wouldn't, or I already wouldn't feel safe if I was in the witness protection program anyways. But, um, you know... Um, you know, the the U.S. Marshal said that that's not the case. So, you know, I guys, at, at the end of the day, if I was in witness relocation and this happened and the U.S. Marshals were like, don't worry, it wasn't part of the data, I still wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I'd be like, um, I'm like to move again or, you know, I don't know. Uh, also, they said many documents are marked secret or top secret. I find that interesting. Traditionally, at least in the Department of Defense, um, Classified documents, which are secret or top secret, that's classified documents, they are typically kept on a separate network. You don't co-mingle uh, classified documents and network with unclassified documents and network, right? You'll see computers with like green stickers or red stickers. You see <clears throat> media labeling with like stamps that say secret, top secret. You, it's famously seen in like videos and stuff, like when they're trying to indicate it's a secret document. So. I do find it interesting. I don't find it unbelievable that there would be commingling of data because um, users are going to do user things like, hey, make sure you don't commingle. But it's way easier if I just have one thumb drive, Jerry, and I put the class documents on the thumb drive in my regular, you know, Kocha menu on the thumb drive too, because now I only have to carry one thumb drive. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you oppressing me, Jerry? I am really good at my job. I'm absolutely not going to get compromised. I'm not going to leave this thumb drive in the back of an Uber. Um, get off my back. And then, you know, things like this happen. So co-mingling is co-mingling. It's not good. Um, because it is uh, U.S. Marshal Service, I will play... Uh... <laughs> I don't know, guys. Hey, KRS-One? KRS one might get bumped out for regulators. I'm just saying. Okay, let's do the mid roll. 
All right, guys, I want to thank you all for being here, taking time out of your day to um, engage, consume some cyber news and uh, network with each other. Thank you all. Thanks to the stream sponsors, Barricade Cyber, XM Cyber, and Panopsi Cyber, who I didn't mention at the beginning because I wanted to wait till right now. Panopsi Cyber, guys, Brandon Poole's company out of South Carolina, one of the services that they provide is quantified risk assessment. So if you are, you know, building a cyber program, if you're standing up something, if you want to know where to invest dollars, like let's say that your business is like, hey, listen, how much money do you need this uh, budget year? And you're like, I don't freaking know. Why not get a quantified risk assessment? Because Brandon can come in, look at your program, talk to your business, and in a few weeks, come back to you with a full report and say, dude, here is the low hanging fruit. Here is high risk reduction, low cost, Look at the percentages. It's all evidence-based. A CFO can follow it. An objective third party can follow it. The insurance company can follow it. The board can follow it, okay? It's very, very sound and it's very, very valuable, especially because you're not wasting money on redundant controls, which a lot of people do. A lot of people make the mistake of just throwing money at something so they can announce that they're gonna be doing something and then for three months they're reporting on the progress of that something. And no one stops to think, bro, Like, is it actually reducing cyber risk? Like, I'm all excited that you're rolling MDM out, but we don't have mobile devices here. We don't do BYOD. Like, what the hell are you, sorry. What are you doing, okay? So consider quantified risk assessment from Panopsi. Uh, Links in the description below. Guys, if you're getting education value, entertainment value, smash that like button. Thanks, Kimberly. It only takes a hot second, and it tells me that you're enjoying the content, and more importantly, it tells people who are not members of the Simply Cyber community to come check out the Simply Cyber community. Get that YouTube algorithm working for us. Guys, just a reminder, sign up for the Simply Cyber newsletter because we are going to be launching a new Threat Intel Wednesdays starting next Wednesday, the 22nd. You're not going to want to miss it. Obviously, you'll continue to get the um, three Cyber uh, Pro actionable tasks on Monday, which I deliver and delivers huge value for free. All you have to do is sign up and you get it. But we're going to get a Threat Intel mail on Wednesday. I'm taking the value and turning the dial to 11. You feel me? Spinal tap. Want to get into the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Um, So... The Simply Cyber Community Challenge is an opportunity for you as an individual to build your network. I want to, I want you to build your network. I want to help you build your network. Networking is so important. I, Jerry, and Simply Cyber want to help you build it. So we've been doing this challenge every day. There's a team live and a team replay. If you're tagged in team live, go um, post on LinkedIn your story, your cybersecurity story, and everybody connect on that post comment on that post and most importantly connect with everybody in the post right so the original poster plus the people in comments it's simply cyber community members it's cyber people it's people who are into helping each other you will build your network very quickly and you will be very happy with the value of that network joel belton as far as i remember joel belton currently had the ball because um eric taylor had posted so if i'm not mistaken joel belton um i can we get a confirmation whether Joel posted or not? I'm sorry, I, I didn't have time. I was painting last night. Uh, did Joel Belton post last night? While I'm getting confirmation on that, um, while I'm getting confirmation on that, the team replay one, it was base case. I made a faux pas and thought he was tagging me like an idiot, uh, but he wasn't. Prime Sci IT, Prime Sci IT posted in. Um, And the team replay, Simply Cyber Community Challenge, so great job, Uh, Nick P. uh, We'll look for Nick P to tag someone. Oh, we tagged Just Ben. So Just Ben is holding the Simply Cyber Community Challenge flag for team replay. And um, Joel Belton, hold on, I'm really confused. Did Joel Belton, um, did Joel Belton tag someone? I, I don't know. This could be, did Joel Belton break the chain? Did Joel Belton break the chain? Oh no. Oh no, Joel. All right, stay tuned. Mods, can you let me know if Joel broke the chain? We'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. Um, and it's finally, um, finally, can someone look on LinkedIn and see if Joel posted the Simply Cyber Community Challenge? If not, if not, that's okay. We knew it, at some point the chain was gonna break and we'd have to start it again, okay? So let's just play it by ear. I want to say it is, what's your meme? 
What's your meme Thursday? What's your meme Thursday? And today is no different. All right. Dan Reardon every Thursday drops um, a, a meme, and this one's good. You know, I've got that upcoming show uh, with Night Studios. Uh, it's kind of, it's not going to be Jerry Springer, but Dan Reardon has hooked it up. Today's topic, my dog's love interest uses the password 123456. Jerry, Jerry. So anyways, really funny. Thank you, Dan Reardon, Haircut Fish. Everybody enjoy uh, a good laugh. All right, let's get back into the news. Thanks so much, uh, Haircut Fish, for another great meme of the week. Let's roll. First, Darrow cryptojacking campaign. The cryptocurrency Darrow launched in 2017, claiming to offer significant improvements on privacy and mining speeds compared to Monero and other privacy-focused coins. Monero remains a popular coin for cryptojacking schemes due to its relative anonymity, so it's not surprising that researchers observed the first cryptojacking campaign using Duro. Researchers at CrowdStrike observed the campaign, with threat actors scanning for exposed Kubernetes clusters with misconfigured authentication. The attackers used this to deploy a Docker image that started the miner across all Kubernetes nodes using a hard-coded wallet address and mining pool. Interestingly, the researchers saw a Monero cryptojacking campaign targeting the same cluster, which removed the Darrow container and started a more aggressive takeover. Yeah, I love it. Open okay, so a couple of things. One, um, Kubernetes, uh, Docker containers, cloud, it, it's all about resources spinning up and operating. Now, a lot of people don't have visibility into like how these clouds, these clusters are working. It's just a lot of cloud resources. Also, um, uh, yeah. Okay. So it's a lot of cloud resources. You will see um, resources getting consumed and used, but um, you know you'd have to be looking for it and stuff. So some enterprising, very clever, very um, I don't want to call them sophisticated, but very uh, talented developers who are malicious uh, develop some type of crypto jacking operation. By the way, crypto jacking is basically just uh, when you're mining cryptocurrency. It takes energy. It takes resources. This is what mining is. Crypto jacking is basically taking someone else's resources and having it mined for you. So basically, it's all profit for you because you're not paying for any type of um, resource, energy consumption, anything like that. That's what crypto jacking is. It, usually, you could do crypto jacking on an individual's workstation through a browser exploit or something like that. Kubernetes. Now we're talking, baby. Like we're we're going full steam. We've got massive amounts of resources. Scale it up, scale it down. Elasticity, all the cloud buzzwords. So Dero is a private coin, um, a privacy coin. I guess it competes with Monero. I I haven't heard about it, but that's fine. What's really interesting? Okay, that sounds good, BSEC. I'll I'll, I'll roll with that. Thank you. Um, here's what's interesting, and this is my favorite part. You like guys, you shouldn't do anything different, right? Whether it's Monero or Darrow, they're using APIs to get up into your Kubernetes and exploit it to do crypto jacking. So look for that type of behavior. Look for those resources to get consumed. But the interesting fun thing here, and this is like a nuanced thing, but I love it, is that there are instances that they're seeing where Monero um crypto jacking is looking for um exposed Kubernetes clusters that are mining Darrow and they go in and remove the Darrow crypto jacking. So they're like helping out the good guys by saying, oh, hey, we'll clean up this Darrow mess for you. And then they put their own crypto jacking. So you don't see it often, um, but it's like malware threat actor competing with another malware threat actor um, to basically own your machine. So think of it as like, it almost makes me think of like when you're like you see it in like prison movies where like there's like the big guy and then he's got like um, uh, some weaker person who like follows him around. And then they're like, that's my that's my man. Like, that's my man. Like and like he does what I say. And then like a bigger person comes over and like knocks that guy out. And he's like, you're mine now. Right. Like that's kind of what's happening. Like the little person is like the victim's infrastructure and the big strong threat actors are basically uh, fighting each other for access to that resource. So at the end of the day, it's your Kubernetes cluster being crypto jacked, whether it's mining Monero or Darrow or Bitcoin or whatever it is, Shiba, Shiba Inu coins, Simply Cyber coins, whatever it is, you don't want it happening on your uh, Kubernetes clusters. So be mindful of that. 
OpenAI open sources its evaluation framework. The popular AI company open source its system Evolves, which it uses to evaluate performance across its various models. Given the increasing product integrations with OpenAI's and other AI models, the company hopes developers will use Evolves to share and crowdsource benchmarks. The framework allows developers to use datasets to generate consistent prompts, looking at how a model completes them and easily compare different models. Users can create their own benchmarks for Evolves. OpenAI said it will grant early GPT-4 access to high-quality contributors. Yeah, all right. Well, slightly subjective. Um, the evals, like, okay, so a couple things here. One, I love the idea that um, OpenAI is open and kind of community sourcing um, the model testing. You know, it's like open source software or when they allow the encryption algorithms to go through public debate or public scrutiny. Like this thing is so powerful, it does need to be transparent. You can't just have like one, you know, kind of oligarch or one type of like techno uh, company that's that's ruling it all and operating in shadows because there's all sorts of opportunity for influence, bias, um, all of these things, right? Cash, we know human nature is going to do that. So by doing this evals thing, uh, it's pretty cool. Now, obviously, um, who gets to decide uh, what? testing is done and how it's done. That's a different thing. They said highly uh, qualified um, testers, or they said something around that. Um, who gets to decide that criteria? All I know is I like this direction. I think that this is important. I also want to say that I read an article last night. Um, I can't. I don't know if it's like published or not, but someone sent it to me. Uh, basically, OpenAI had hired a red team, at least one, to go in and attempt to abuse and weaponize ChatGPT for very, very um, specific things. And I saw the the, the logs uh, and ChatGPT was able to kind of like understand and defend itself and, and like not be weaponized. So I appreciate that they were going through the effort to do that. Uh, so that's nice. Shall we play All right, let's keep rolling here. Signature bank under investigation prior to seizure. We covered that regulators seized the crypto focus bank over the weekend. Now, Bloomberg sources say the Justice Department investigators in Washington and Manhattan, as well as the Securities and Exchange Commission, opened investigations into Signature Bank prior to that action. They looked into if Signature took adequate steps to detect money laundering with clients. While under investigation, there has been no accusation of wrongdoing yet. It's not clear if this played a part in the decision to seize the bank. Regulators say they took that action due to losing faith in Signature's management after it didn't provide reliable and consistent data. Okay. We're looking forward to another great... Straight cash, homie. Yeah, straight cash, homie. I, you know, Jesus, um, Randy's getting a lot, of, a lot of action today. Uh, <laughs> so here's the deal. Let me play a little music. All right, so check it out. Signature Bank is another one of these um, banks that's kind of involved in this bank meltdown situation. I do not, guys, just, this isn't in a tinfoil hat. I have confidence that this, like, bank meltdown is not going to have, uh, it's not like the, um, the 2008 meltdown, okay? This, this is going to affect some people, not the widespread amount of people. Uh, I don't think contagion is a thing with this, personally. This is my opinion only, right? Do your own research. Um, Signature Bank facing criminal probe, okay? Because of work with crypto clients. Guys. It's uh, it's cash it's straight cash, homie. Right when criminals have mil hundreds of millions of dollars and they need it laundered, and these banks are working with crypto things. Crypto, it's dude. There's a lot of way to trace crypto, but it's also very easy to kind of move crypto. And if you move it through one of these privacy coins in and out, you know you can try to launder the money, or you use money mules, or I, there's I darknet diaries. I've heard uh, a couple of how these. North Korea, most specifically, how they set it up to launder money. So they steal $100 million. They might get $30 million out because of all the, you know, basically the <laughs> the way they get the money out. Uh, they have to do it in like $50,000 increments. It's painful. Uh, but anyway, Signature Bank probably making some bad moves here. Dan Catledge, we're going we're gonna to talk about the, um, the, the Simply Cyber Community Challenge in a second. All right, so... Just know that basically there's not a lot of cybersecurity story here, okay? This is a crypto thing. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Finfrock. Uh, we continue to see um, 
you know, the crypto market collapsing, crypto winner. It, it's 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 dude, it's like 90% like scammers, charlatans, fraudsters, criminals. Um, you know, that's all there is. All right, so nothing really uh, left to do there. I, all right, so let's do some jaw jacking really quickly. Um, I want to remind everybody it is 845. So nailed it, base case and NCC group. I hope you enjoyed that. I want to remind everybody that, or let you all know that at, that it, what the heck? Um, at 9 a.m., so in 13 minutes from now, I'm going to drop a link in chat here. Josh Mason, our very own Josh Mason, right? is going to be going live with Chris Kirsch, CEO and co-founder of Run Zero, and they will be doing a live stream raffle for a Flipper Zero. So if you want to win one of these hot babies, right? Very hard to get right now. Very cool. If you want one, join that live stream because they're going to be not only dropping knowledge on cyber asset management with Run Zero, they're going to be giving away fun stuff. Heck yeah. All right, so let's do the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Let's officially declare Joel Belton. Let's let's let him let's make him <laughs> wear it like a like a, a scarlet letter. All right, Joel Belton. He might get another chance, but we're gonna kick the chain off again. So one of one links goes to BSEC. DJ BSEC, I'm calling you. If you can pick up the baton, please. Grab that and holla, holla, holla. BSEC, if you can uh, recognize in chat that you're going to pick it up. Let's see. BSEC, you got it, Bubba? Yes, shame. Shame. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Let's do that. All right, here we go. There we go. b sex has got it. b sex has got it. Thanks so much, b sex Joel Belton, forever known as shame. Oh, he's going to be so tickled when he sees this on Team Replay. All right. So that's the jam for that, guys. I want to thank all of you. I had mentioned something that I would touch in um, jaw jacking. I can't remember what it is. So if someone remembers, remind me. Want to Again, thanks so much to the stream sponsors. Thank you to all of you. We're at 166 people right now. Uh, it is Thursday all week. We were doing 8 a.m. Eastern time because uh, spring break. If you're in the Northeast, please be safe. I, you guys are getting ravaged up there with the Nor'easter. What's Instagram? Oh, Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ken Cephalus and, and Dylan. So, guys, Instagram. I've been trying. Okay. I've been trying to do the Instagram, right? Age myself here. The Instagram. Okay. And I, I get these notifications and stuff. I don't know what these mean. I think this means five people liked a post and three people followed. And I get messages. I don't understand. Like, like I know that Instagram is supposed to be like um, engaging. Like, but I don't understand um, how I'm supposed to. Like, I don't. Do people talk? Like, I don't understand how to. I don't understand the engagement part of Instagram. Like, I understand how to post, but I don't understand how to like reply or do other things and whatever i'm just terrible at it and uh i'm okay with that i've come to i've come to terms so if you like the instagram content thank you for uh for for the instagram stuff but if i don't reply to you it's because i i literally don't understand how to do it not because i'm not doing it carmen san diego shame rock shake served oh shame rock shake wow that's a good one that's a good one at the uh, at the Joel Bell ice cream shop, new fla new uh, new dessert, the Shame Rock Shake. I have to reply to comments directly. Okay, thank you, BSEC. Thanks, Terrence Billingsley. You can reply on Instagram, but it's not like Facebook or LinkedIn. Yeah, I don't I don't even do Facebook. I I, I never really did Facebook, so I don't even know. I know Twitter, if that matters. I know LinkedIn. I if if that if that works. Love it. I've been really enjoying every day. Dan Reardon, haircut fish. Not, I, I'm not, I never tell you what to do for a meme, but uh, <laughs> the shame rock shake might be good material. Uh, stream gets me up in the morning. Yeah, that's right, James Randolph. Gets me up too. Get my coffee. 
show up every every single day even if i'm not feeling great the best way to reply is to get the best comments and make the video of your replies yeah see that's that's like next level beast like i don't even know what to do with that i love the background music it pumps me up oh thanks sue bro i hope you guys have been enjoying the format so just a little programming note um since we are jaw jacking um I, i've got three sponsors now i'll never do more than three i've decided um and I've, I do two at the beginning, one at the mid-roll, so it makes it a little bit smoother on you guys. Uh, I appreciate you checking out the sponsors and listening to me talk about the sponsors. It does, you know, obviously it, they pay to be sponsors, so that money I invest back into Simply Cyber, quality of life stuff. Um, hopefully, like, you know, the videos, um, the, the, the team. I have, like, a team of people helping me now, which is really excellent. Um, I'm getting a new studio here. Uh, I've been I've been teasing this out for a while, but really big big news coming where I'm getting like a studio and it's gonna it's gonna have two different sets. And my wife and I were just talking about it yesterday, like what it would look like. She's very good with like design and stuff, and I'm not, um, <laughs> obviously. So um, that's gonna be happening probably in like late March, early April. Um, I've got these courses I'm working on. Um, yeah, like just so much, um, and and I love the look and feel of the um, of, of the show. Um, just a quick reminder: I, I keep forgetting about some of these things. Uh, later today at four thirty p.m., Mary Galloway is going to be coming on for Simply Cyber Live. We're going to be doing that, uh, so come join and learn about all the top cyber events that can help you grow. Good, good luck, David. Go adult. Be good. Casually, Joseph, I've always thought Instagram was the social media equivalent of window shopping. Yeah. Let me do this. Let's see. Love the show. Best part of waking up. Thanks, John De La Cruz. Yeah, I, lo I love I love it. You know, doing the music, connecting with all you guys. The Simply Cyber Community Challenge has given me a lot of, um, like, I, I like... I mean, it's 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 for you guys. It does, like, but it's it's invigorating for me, guys. Like, one of my underpinning like motivations is to help all of you. That's like that's like one of my drivers, right? It's like, you know, I love cybersecurity. I love talking about cybersecurity. I love living cybersecurity, practicing cybersecurity, playing video games based on cybersecurity. I love all of it. And helping other people kind of like find that love and that passion and experience it themselves gives me a lot of um satisfaction. It's 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 very um like spiritually nourishing. It, it, and it's righteous. So that's why I, I do it. And I love it. I love that I'm able to do it. I mean, can you guys imagine if I was into like um, 14th century literature? Like, I, I, it, like that would suck. Like I wouldn't be able, no one would care. Right. So this is cool. Got a bot to cross post to Mastodon. Ooh, James Randolph. Love it. Oh, get a bot. I thought you said you had a bot. Um, people helping people. That's right. Thanks, William Welch. Sock video is awesome. Thanks, Sherry. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, I hope you guys got value out of that. If, if you guys didn't see it already, whoops. If you guys didn't see it already, there was a, um, I did a produce video yesterday. This one right here. Uh, start here. A lot of people liked it. It went really well. I'll drop a link in chat. Okay. Got the, uh, Got the, it, hey, if you don't know how to sign up for the newsletter, go to simplycyber.io and like basically right here, this is where you sign up. So, thanks, Marcus. Oh, and um, if you can, here, let me do this off screen and then we're going to jam over to Josh's thing. Um, let me see if I can find this really quickly. If you've taken my GRC class and gotten value from it, I would love to ask you for a single favor. Let me see if I did it here. Nope. Let me do it this way. I, I set up a uh, GRC Analyst Masterclass feedback form. I've gotten 20 responses. I have over 10,000 students. So I'm certain that <laughs> there's more of you in chat who have taken the GRC Analyst Masterclass and have a thought on it. I'll drop a link in chat. If you could, I would really, really appreciate you taking just a minute and 
commenting. Look at, look at this. Listen, hold on one second. GRC Analyst Masterclass Feedback Form, right? All you have to do is, what are your thoughts about it? It sucked. It was awesome. I loved it. Whatever. Can I tell other people? Yes. Would you like to be, rec like, would you like your real name or anonymous? That, that's all it is. It takes, it takes all of, I don't know, 45 seconds. Will you please share your feedback with me? Please. That's all I ask. Thank you, John De La Cruz. Put that in the Google Forms. Here's the thing. So many people have sent so many nice things to me, but they're like across different platforms. I can't, I can't, I, 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 I couldn't curate it all. So I'm, I'm hoping that this works for me, okay? All right, guys. Thanks so much. Let's go ahead and go over to Josh's stream. I'll drop it one more time in chat. Go over there. Uh, in a minute, and if you can, I see many of you in there. Michael Jeffries, William Welch, Haircut Fish, Chris Fazier, Stuns and Roses in there. Drop a hashtag Simply Cyber in chat. Let Josh know that we came over there with full force. Let me see. Drop hashtag Simply Cyber in chat. All right, everybody, have a good day. Thank you all. Solid Thursday. I'll see you in Josh's stream, and then hopefully see you at 4.30 for the um, Simply Cyber Live event with Mary Galloway. Be good, everybody. Thank you.